Hello, welcome to another episode of the Google Ads API developer series on working with REST. I'm Laura Chevalier, and I'm a developer relations engineer on the Google Ads API. In this episode, we'll look at how to authenticate to the API using REST. Then we'll walk through an example of generating an access token and using that access token in a request to the API. In order to follow along with our demo later, we'll need some credentials to authenticate. This includes OAuth2 credentials and a developer token. These credentials are needed regardless of how we access the API, not just for REST. I won't go into the details of setting up these credentials, but I will list out which ones are required and what they mean. If you want help setting up your API credentials, check out our video series about authentication or have a look at our developer documentation. For our OAuth2 authentication, we first need a client ID and client secret, which are specific to a Google Cloud project. These won't be needed in the API request itself, but they'll be used in generating two other OAuth credentials, an access token and a refresh token, both of which grant API access to a specific Google Ads account. An access token has a short lifespan, lasting only about an hour. We can generate a fresh access token by using a refresh token, which is a durable credential. Next is the developer token, which is an account agnostic credential to connect your app to the API. We generate the developer token in the API center within a manager ad account. Note that even though it's generated within a specific manager account, it can be used to access accounts that are not in that manager account hierarchy. Also note that the first request made to the API with a given access token associates the client ID linked to that access token to the developer token used in the request. The developer token, on the other hand, can be associated with many client IDs. The developer token and the OAuth2 access token are the only required HTTP headers to access the API. In addition to those, we have some that are optional. First is the login customer ID, which specifies the ID of the manager ad account making the API call. This manager should have permissions on the customer ID you're trying to access. Second is the linked customer ID, which is used by third-party app analytics providers when uploading conversions to a linked Google Ads account. Now that we've established all the authentication HTTP headers, let's have a look at an example. As I mentioned, we'll need an access token to authenticate with the API. To generate the access token, we'll use the refresh token we generated previously, which again, you can see examples of in our authentication video series. I'm going to use curl to demonstrate this access token generation step. And for ease, I'm going to set my credentials and environment variables. So that's client ID equals my client ID, client secret equals my client secret, and refresh token equals my refresh token. And I can get the actual curl command directly from the documentation. So from the authorization and HTTP headers document in the REST interface guide, I'll scroll to generating new access tokens. And in order to make this reference my uh, environment variables that I just set, I'm actually going to edit this first before I copy it to add a dollar sign in front of each of these. Uh, and that will make it so that once I copy and paste this into my terminal, I can just run it as is, and it will reference the variables that I set. So I'll go ahead and copy that paste into my terminal, and now I can run that. And it outputs some JSON, including my newly generated access token. With that access token and our other credentials, we can make a request to the API. As a reminder, the required credentials include your OAuth credentials and a developer token. I've already gone ahead and set my developer token in its own environment variable, which I called developer underscore token. And I can take that access token that I got in the response from this request, and I'll store that in another variable, which I'll call OAuth2 access token. 
And that's so that it will match the name of the variable that you'll see in the next example. One thing to note is that when using our client libraries, the access token regeneration is automatically managed behind the scenes, so you don't actually need to handle this logic yourself. When using the REST interface, though, you'll need to periodically send requests to the OAuth server using your refresh token to generate access tokens that you can then use and request to the API for successful authentication. With that, I want to test an API request to make sure my developer token and access token give me the access that I expect. So I'm going to pull from another example that's all ready for us. So I'll head to the examples section of the same documentation. And for this demo, I'm going to use the list accessible accounts example, since this allows me to test my API credentials without passing a request body. Again, I'll copy and paste this into my terminal, and this time the example is already referencing my environment variables, so I can just run it. Oh, and I forgot to set an API version environment variable. So I'm going to run currently the latest version, which is v9. And I'll retry that. OK. It worked, and I got back a list of accessible customers. That's all for the demo. Be sure to check out our REST interface guide and reference documentation to get a deeper understanding of working with the Google Ads REST API. As always, we welcome your feedback and look forward to seeing you in other videos. Thanks for joining.